Hello, my name's Elaine. I'm a teacher. Today, I'm going to read chapter 95 of God Speaks to His Children, the ACN, Child's Bible, Living and Dying for Jesus. From now on, the apostles worked in Jerusalem. They healed the sick and gave witness to the life and death of Jesus. More and more people came to believe. The high priests and the teachers of Israel wanted people to forget about Jesus. So they arrested the apostles, questioned them and forbade them to teach in the name of Jesus. But the apostles did not pay any attention to this prohibition. Stephen, one of the first deacons, was stoned to death. But before he collapsed under the hail of stones, he called out, I see heaven is open. I see the Son of Man. He is standing at the right hand of God. Lord Jesus, take me. The community of Jesus was persecuted in Jerusalem. All those who acknowledged their faith were driven out of the city. But wherever they went, they proclaimed what God had done for people through Jesus Christ. And in these places, they founded new communities. The first thing that I thought about when I heard that story is how incredibly fortunate we are to live here in this country at this time. Because we have laws protecting our freedom of speech. That means that we can share our beliefs and our opinions without the fear of being prosecuted and we're encouraged to be tolerant of each other. And that's really important, children. But in the time of the first apostles, that sadly wasn't the case. And there are many saints and martyrs who were persecuted for sharing the good news about Jesus. Now I think that in that story, Stephen and the apostles were incredibly brave because even though they knew that they were going to be persecuted, they did what they thought was the right thing to do. They didn't stop telling people about Jesus. They didn't stop healing people. They carried on because they had great, great faith. Now we're very lucky in that we know we're not going to be persecuted for our faith. But sometimes it still takes courage, doesn't it, children? to stand up and be a witness to our faith and to do what we really believe in our hearts is the right thing to do. I'm sure that you've all had times in your life, I know I've had lots of times in my life, where it's been really difficult for me to stand up and for people to see me do what I think is the right thing to do. Because that's not always what's the easiest choice. Today, I want you to have a little think about what you're going to do next time you come to a fork in your road like that. Are you going to do what you think in your heart is the right thing to do? Or are you going to do what's easy. I want you to think about this example. There's a boy on the playground. He's not very popular. Some of the other children don't like him very much and they tease him. But the boy's all on his own and he's obviously feeling really miserable. What would you do? You've got two choices. 
the easy thing to do would just be to walk away because it's not your problem and it won't affect you. The harder thing to do would be to go and comfort that child, to tell somebody who you think might be able to help and to be a really good friend to that person. Even if it might mean that some of those unkind children might notice you, it might make you feel a little bit uncomfortable. So you see children, what you know in your heart to be the right thing to do isn't always easy. And I think we can take real strength from some of the stories of the saints and the martyrs that we know to try and give us courage when we come to a decision like that. And I hope that today, if you have a choice between doing what's right and what's easy, I hope that some of you will find some of that courage to do the right thing. I'm sure that you will, children.